it's Andrea and today is Monday, I believe it's the 24th of August 2020, beta day 24. I'm in my car and uh, gonna go see the doctor. Well, I'm gonna go see the doctor. <laughs> yep. Today is the day I see my rheumatologist. I see him four times a year unless there's an emergency. So, what are you up to today? I think there's too many people on the road. <laughs> I always think that, so that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> coming up behind me so maybe there's not too many people on the road. It's pretty nice outside. It's They said it's going to get up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It already feels hot. It's hot and humid. So have you watched the Umbrella Academy? Bob and I just finished, I guess last week we finished the second season of the Umbrella Academy. It's a TV show on Netflix and it's based on a comic book series and um, it's fun. It's got interesting characters, you know, and it's got it's got a lot of music from different years and stuff. There's a lot of music and dancing and there's some really outrageous characters in it, but some of the some of the stuff Let's just put it this way, okay? This doesn't give anything away, but there's time stuff in it, and that gets... <laughs> Bob and I both find time travel stuff annoying, because eventually... It's just like... Time travel is like an interdimensional chess game that nobody wins. There, that's my quote for today. <laughs> So it's like, we watch the end of it and we're like, do we really want to watch the third season? I liked both the seasons and really, I like the characters more than anything else. My two favorite characters are Klaus and number five. So if you've seen them, if you've seen this show, you know who I'm talking about. Klaus and number five. They're the most interesting to me.
are like Japanese motorcycles and stuff. And then there's the ones that are more of the American style, like the Harley Davidson. And, you know, they sit differently. I kind of think of it like when you when you go horseback riding. There's there's two there's two main kinds of horseback riding in the U.S. There's there's uh, English and there's um, Western. And I know how to ride Western. Well, one of my sons took lessons in English, and I know some of the differences, but. I'm just more, I'm, I'm used to the commands and stuff for the Western, and I'm used to the Western saddle. Plus, I don't like the way they sit on the English saddle. I mean, when you do it right, the way, you, you know, anyway, I don't want to go into detail, because I'll probably get something wrong. I've, I've spent too many years doing Western riding. How did we get on horseback riding? Oh, yeah, we were talking about motorcycles. There's like some construction vehicles up here and they got a police escort. State the state troopers. Oh. There's like so there's two construction vehicles and they're going to regular speed and one of them has two guys on the back of the truck. And one guy's standing in the middle of the truck. And it's not a safe looking truck. It's not like a pickup truck. I don't know how to describe it. It wouldn't be good if they fell off. Let's just put it that way. But I will approach carefully. They are now on my right. I am passing them. Yay, I don't have to worry about them anymore. Do you, ever, do you worry about that stuff? You're like, ah. I hate when you're behind those trucks. There's these trucks that the bottom of them can go out. They're not supposed to go out, but when it dumps, if it leans up, the bottom comes out. I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's a kind of dump truck. Whenever I'm behind them, I get nervous. I'm like, ah, what if the backside comes out? next? Do you got any interesting TV shows for me to watch? Because I'm almost done re-watching Monk. I'm on season six and there's seven seasons. And then Bob and I are also still watching Good Witch. There's movies coming out this year that I want to see, but do I want to spend $20 to see them on my own? I'm not going to the theater. They just opened theaters in my state. Listen, okay, if you're not from the U.S., you might not understand what's going on here. Well, some of us from here don't understand what's going on here, but some states, all the states are at different levels of uh, shutdown for the COVID-19, you know, for the pandemic. And it depends on a couple things. One of them is, is it depends on your governor. And the other one is it depends on how much, you know, how much hospitalization is going on for COVID. Ah! A rock hit my window. Sorry. I hope it didn't break my window. I hope it just made dirt on there. It was just kicked up from a, a pickup truck pulling, a, pulling one of those... What is that called? Pulling a trailer that is made out of metal that you push the back down and you can put riding mower stuff on it. I don't know where it got a rock. I guess maybe they're supposed to have mud flaps on it. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, because there's not rocks on this road. Everybody's passing me. I'm not going fast enough for them. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm driving a safe speed. <laughs> Oh, so I was talking about states. Okay, so in Pennsylvania, we're still... Well, so our governor has us... You're supposed to wear a mask as soon as you leave your property, which most people are not doing. You have to wear a mask to go into stores. Most people are doing that because you can't get into the stores without the mask on. And um, although some people are wearing it, like, below their nose 
clots on her face or Ooh, my air conditioning is acting weird. Anyway, so in Pennsylvania they've allowed restaurants to open if they they prefer if you have the outdoor seating, you know, and they keep things separate and you know and keep the the seats apart. And most of the restaurants that are Bob and I haven't been going to any of these restaurants. But um I'm really upset because my air conditioning is acting weird. Anyway. And as my husband knows, I can't live without the air conditioning, so this is going to be a big deal. <laughs> I, I would drive down the road with a giant air conditioner in the side of my car if I had to. So, not that that would work right, but you know, I'd figure something out. I'd have like a giant ice block and a fan. It'd be a lot of water in here. <laughs> anyway, so with Pennsylvania. So most restaurants still, it's like they're leaving it up to the restaurants. Because there's like, most of the restaurants are only having pickup. You know, like curbside, you can't go in. Curbside or delivery, okay? That's including McDonald's. Well, McDonald's, you can drive through it too. Whoa, there goes the state trooper. Oh, all those people that passed me, maybe one of them are <laughs> going to get pulled over. I don't know. Anyway, there's a couple, there's some restaurants that are open for outdoor seating and there's some that are open for indoor seating. I can't do this. I can't. I'm at too high of a risk. Well, you see, I'm going to the, I'm going to the rheumatologist. So I don't know if you know this, how long you've been watching me, but um, I have psoriatic arthritis and it is a, it is an immunodeficiency, it's an immune, Im, it's an immune, I don't know how to say it, okay? It's a disorder that affects your, it affects the way that your body attacks um, diseases and stuff. So sometimes it doesn't attack enough and sometimes it attacks too much. Usually, usually if you have psoriatic arthritis or if you have rheumatoid arthritis, your white blood cells are attacking your body. And so, like they're usually, they're attacking more than one place, but they're attacking your joints. So like my my joints, I have, I have missing parts of some of my joints. And then I also have inflammation because my body will be actively, there's periods of time where it doesn't want or it doesn't do it. It's unpredictable, okay? So if I get sick, this is why I have to get a flu shot every year. Because if I get sick, my body will overreact to the sickness. And will start attacking other things. It could it, it attacks your organs too. The white blood cells. So that's what an, that's what the kind of immunodeficiency I have. If I get COVID-19, it's a you don't know what's going to happen. I, I've got a really high chance of it, of my body attacking myself, okay? Attacking my organs, trying to shut things down because my white blood cells are, they're, they're just too strong or I don't, I don't know it. I don't know the, I don't know the mechanism of it exactly, but that's what happens. So I'm not going to any restaurants, you know? I don't like to, I don't like to go anywhere during this stuff. I would like, like to, I'd love to go. I miss, I miss doing things just like everybody else does, but I don't want to end up in a hospital, you know, or dead, or with organ failure, you know. These are all possibilities for me. And I'm somebody that if you saw me, in, if you saw me in person, you might not know that I have this condition. I've had this for like 12 years, so yeah, anyway, so most of the doctors are doing, in Pennsylvania, are doing where you call them, you either talk to them on the phone for your appointment, or you can do a video conference. Well, my doctor today and tomorrow, I have two doctor's appointments, tomorrow's my neurologist, but today's my rheumatologist. 
both of them have to see me in person. Because they have to they have to touch me in different places and, and look into my eyes and I don't know. They gotta do stuff. So I'm not real I'm not real happy about being out. I mean I'm happy, I like I love driving. I love being out driving and I, I like riding better lately, but driving, I can see the different... Oh, there's an ambulance up here. There's an ambulance and a state trooper and a vehicle behind the state trooper, so... Oh, oh my god. There's a motorcycle in the middle of her. I wonder if it's that little motorcycle that went past me. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. There's a motorcycle in the middle of the median. But it looks like it's parked, so I don't know what the deal is. Um, yeah, so there's some stores that are open and some stores that are not open. Most stores that are still in business are open right now. Some of them will only, in Pennsylvania I'm talking about, some of them let you come in, some of them will only let you come in a certain number of people at a time, and there's other there's other uh, businesses that you have to make an appointment. So, you can imagine. The ones that you have to make an appointment, you usually would be spending a lot of money there. So. Um, so, yeah. Drive safely. Woo! everybody in Pennsylvania does, so you're going to see a lot of people passing me. But they put these narrow things and they put these, we call them cattle chutes, but it's like these cement barriers in there. And sometimes you'll be just driving between two of them on a narrow strip, like a single car strip. And uh, it's best to it's best to follow the instructions. <laughs> Man, I sound like somebody's mom. Well, I am somebody's mom. But I'm not, probably not your mom. Uh, so, we gotta get on to 76. Once I get into King of Prussia, we gotta get on, right around King of Prussia, I gotta get on to 76.
they call this the something expressway. that I have to go over two lanes to stay on this road. So if you're from Philly, you know exactly where I am. Well, maybe you don't. There's a couple places like that. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh. oh, there's like an ice cream truck. Are people buying ice cream from the ice cream truck? I guess that's not a bad idea. I don't know how it works. I thought that restaurant said not real food. <laughs> it said real food, but there was like a knife over top of it. And for some reason, it's like a small knife. And my brain just saw it as a not, not real food. lady looked so disco. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. Oh, here's my turn. She like, she like was wearing a, a jumpsuit that looked like it had bell bottoms and she had uh, curly hair and she had her earbuds in it. Got her head going back and forth. I was having like, my brain was going back to the 70s and 80s. Oh wow, there's like a lot of empty parking spaces. It never looks like this. Now let's see, we're gonna park right here. Oh. I'm 
early. But maybe they'll take me early. I don't know. I'm gonna take off my take off these gloves. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Oops. It's not really that exciting. <laughs> take that one off. Ah, oh, looks like the wind's blowing out there. Windy day at 90 degrees. Okay, I'm gonna put my mask on. Dun, dun, dun. I like to look in the mirror to make sure I get it over my ears. I don't. <laughs> well, my sunblock's gonna be on the inside of the mask. Gotta make some of those new ones. Oh. I'll let you know how it went when I get back. Oh. Let's get this mask off. I I used the I used this first. <laughs> Then I got in the car and then my other doctor, uh, my other doctor's office called to confirm. Ugh. Feels like old times going back and forth between all these doctors. My hands are so dry because I've used so much of that stuff. Um, what is this stuff called? Antibacterial whatever it is. Well, that's done. How do I look? I gotta look good for driving. The roads have to see. Oh my god. Look at these little look at these little wrinkles here from the masks. Imagine the doctors and nurses. They get Some of them are getting scars from this stuff. Okay, so the doctor says uh, I'm looking pretty good. I gave I gave him a, I mean my my inflammation is um, pretty pretty well in control. You know I've had a couple of small flares, but nothing like I was having before a few years ago. And he gave me a paper for a hand X-ray. I got to get my hands X-rayed. I think just because I have, I think, I don't, I never got a base, I never got a base um, x-ray for that. I've had my knees done. Oh, they did this thing, they did these, this sunrise. Have you ever had to get the sunrise x-rays on your knees? You're like laying down and you have your knees bent up. And it's all from all different directions, looking at the side of your, anyway. It's weird. It's like a weird x-ray. But yeah, I gotta get my hands x-rayed and then he wants to check my liver functions. Always, all the doctors want to know about my liver functions. They're like, hey, I heard you have a fancy liver. Okay, let's drive home. So there wasn't a lot of people in there and then they had... Um, what do you call it? The seating? They had like some seats, they had a little signs on it says this seat is not in use or something. <laughs> you know, to keep you six feet apart. But it felt, I didn't, I didn't get too nervous in there because there was rules and everybody was following the rules and there weren't a lot of people, you know. It's a medical place, so they have their... They already got some of the medical stuff in place from before that. So that's not bad. Let's see. There's, so there's a deli right here. And there's like two guys eating outside. I've always wanted to get food from that deli because it smells so good. Listen. There's two 
two of the best kinds of delis you can get in Philadelphia and New York. And those are Italian delis and uh, Jewish delis. Amazing. There's a Jewish deli. There's a Jewish deli in um, King of Prussia that they make their own. Is it corned beef? Well, they make a they they make a couple of different. Uh, they process a couple of different kinds of meat. And uh, amazing. I haven't been to a I haven't been out to a deli in so long. I miss it. Well, we should stop talking about these things. So the doctor said he wants to see me in five months, and I said, <laughs> I said, do you think we'll have a, do you think we'll have a vaccine by then? And he said, oh yeah. So I hope that means he does think, I don't, he does, he's not usually sarcastic, so. That would be nice. Now I gotta get into this. I gotta get in here gotta get in here. I gotta get in here. So here's the secret in Philly for getting in. If nobody lets you in, you just keep going even after the lane goes to one lane. They have to let you in after a while because it becomes one lane. You just, I mean, you go slow when you do it, but uh, yeah. Don't stop. All right, no, don't listen. Someone will take my advice and do it the wrong way. Just ignore me. Just keep driving the way you've been driving. I am not a driving instructor. Although I've driven in a lot of crazy places. Although not as not as uh, crazy as Italy. Apparently, my sister said that uh, that's the worst driving she's ever seen. Is in Italy. So don't blame me. She said it. I'm like telling tales out of school over here. going fast and then slow, fast and then slow. See, there's a pickup truck in front of me. I can't see past it. I'm just going to assume everybody's going slow ahead of this guy. So I don't get hit. So I don't get rear-ended. Yeah, I was going to say something. I forgot what it was. I got all distracted by traffic and stuff. the graffiti off the bridge. Clean slate, people! <laughs> I'm a big fan of graffiti, so uh, pay me no mind. I saw some amazing graffiti in Germany. I'm like, we gotta step up our graffiti game over here. I mean, it wasn't just the pictures. It wasn't just the artwork. It was the, the lettering. Everything. It was amazing. I got a couple of pictures when I was there. Of it, but some of the stuff was like you would be in a train because you know that's the best place to see graffiti is you're in a train because sometimes you're going through these overpasses and all these weird things that you only see when you're on the train you don't see them from the highway so it's a I guess it's a perfect place for graffiti artists to go in there and, and uh, practice their uh, art form but it's hard to take pictures of it because you're going quickly and I don't have, going quickly on those uh, trains and I don't have, I don't have the best camera for that, so. Yeah, it's awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I'm back on the Schuylkill Expressway, so it gets pretty tight in here. There's, 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 you can, I don't know if you can see, there's, there's a little bit of a shoulder on the side of the road. It's not as wide as an entire car. And then there's going to be areas where there's no shoulder. So, uh, when there's an accident, knock on wood, God forbid, and all that stuff. When there's an accident on, uh, the Schuylkill Expressway, it causes a lot of commotion. It causes a lot, well not commotion, it causes a lot of stoppage. So see, there's a, there's a pickup truck ahead of me on the right lane, and it's got its left turn signal on. So to me, that means I want to get in the left lane. But, you know, around here, it could mean anything. It, it could just mean they forgot they had their turn signal. Or their blinker. Their blinker. 
Oh, I was sweating so much in there. I'm sweating so much. I'm sweating so much. See, he's got space now to go over and he's not going over. So I think he just uh, doesn't know. Oh, no, now he's going. He's like, oh. Maybe he got an idea from his turn signal. It's like the turn signal says to get in the left lane. Get in the left lane. See all these green trees around here? I like to get a good look at them before the fall and winter comes. I don't mind the fall. The fall is beautiful with all the different colors of leaves, but in the winter, there's nothing but sticks. The trees just look like, like bones. And then you can see all the, all the dilapidated buildings that the trees were hiding. <laughs> Not all of them are dilapidated, but say there's some say there's some abandoned shack back in there. You don't see it during the summer, but in the winter you see it. Do you ever want to go into those buildings? There's like there's like in a well there's a lot of abandoned places near where I live. I don't want to say where there's like an entire town that's abandoned. <laughs> if I've been to that, you can like I don't want to go into detail, but well, no, I think I did a video about it before. I can't think of what it's called, but there's this town, there's this town near, um, this little mini town near the, um, what is it called? Near the power plant. Why can't I think of what it's called? Anyway, it was abandoned. They abandoned it right before the power plant opened up. Well, the power plant bought that land because I don't remember the whole story. People were afraid that it was going to become contaminated because it was close to the power plant. Okay. So it ended up that the power plant bought that land. But um, then it was closed for a long time. And I think we went in there. I th yeah, I think we went in there before they fixed it up. Like now it's fixed up and you can go visit it. There's like in the summer and spring, there's one or two weekends a month where you can go and um, see everything because it's like, it's along the Schuylkill River, so there's, um, there's a, um, what are these things called? There's, the boats go on and there's locks in it and it's a, is that called? Oh my god, I'm ruining the story. Andrea, you're ruining the story. <laughs> it's not a ferry. Listen, in the old days, like in the 1700s, they used to build this little shallow thing at the edge of the rivers, right? There's still, they still have some of these in, in other countries that they're like man-made rivers. They're little, little shallow areas, and they would um, have these long boats, these long flat boats on them that would cut, carry packages, you know, carry items uh, up and down the river. And there'd be horses or donkeys standing on on the side, you know, on the bank, which whatever, it wasn't muddy, they put rocks or they they do this kind of pseudo paving stuff. Or they or they they make it nice they make it a little nice for the donkeys. <laughs> and they pull the boat they pull the boat to different towns, okay? And then there's like a house right there that the person who's in charge of that lock because it's a lot, what happens is the ship comes in and they have like a little gate that goes up behind it and in front of it. And the ship is sitting there and then they can unload the stuff. Man, what is this thing called? There's some around here you can go visit. Uh, canal, a canal. <laughs> a canal, the word of the day is canal. Anyway. So they have, um, they have a house for the canal, the person that was in charge of the canal, and they have, they have, they have all this stuff. I don't know. When we went on the tour, there was, um, there was a woman there that was like the granddaughter of the people.
people that lived in one of the houses. Like she had stories about the different places and stuff there. And um, it was interesting because the town is from a specific time period and it's still set up according to that time period. Like there's towns here. Listen, I, I, live, I live near Philadelphia. There's towns here that are from the 1600s, you know? There's stone buildings and brick buildings and there are a, a few uh, cobblestone roads left. But most of the stuff, the way that the towns were set up, got built upon, you know? So there would be no longer, there would be no longer be like the canal dock and, and the scale house and, or whatever all the, the stuff was they had. They wouldn't have the, the main, the main barn, the main, the main place to take horses and they, you know, like they changed everything, you know, like now a restaurant moves in here and they, they change the way the road looks or whatever. This town that I'm talking about, it's still set up according to like the the 1700s or 1800s. Even though it was open past then, it was still set up that way. Um, so it's it's really cool. It's really cool to visit. If I have a video from that, I'll put. I don't think I have a video. I think I took pictures. I think it was before I was taking video. So unfortunately, but um. If I find somebody else's video, maybe I'll put a, a link to it, but, ah, but I need to, I need to go there when everything opens up and take some video. That'd be nice. Just to make it 